friends, happy Wednesday. It is your friend in flowers, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and I'm pretty pooped, y'all. We are, this is what we've been doing all morning and so much more. And um, so I'm super glad to come inside and sit down. Normally I'm standing up when I do this, right? But I'm sitting down and um, to chat with you guys. And so if you're new here and y'all have hat hair to boot, right? Um, if you've never attended Ask a Flower Farmer, this is the way it works. For about the next 30 minutes or so, I do my best to answer any questions that you post in the bubble with the question mark that's down at the bottom of your screen. That way I don't have to scroll through everybody's name to find the question and perhaps miss your question. And I mean, we're talking cut flower farming, seed starting, um, business, you know, whatever you've got, cool flowers. Um, whatever you've got, bring it on. Um, and I will tell you, so we had our big, while y'all are getting questions in the bubble, um, so we had our big open farm and warehouse this past Saturday. We do that once a year. It is a really big deal. Friends, we welcomed people from 17 different states. We had hundreds and hundreds of people that came. It was so humbling and so much fun. And of course, Dave Dowling and Ellen Frost were here, as well as the whole TGW team. And But what that means is that we left last week, we left a lot of flowers in the garden that as flower farmers, we would have cut because we wanted the gardens to be beautiful, right? And voluptuous. So this week it's killing us, y'all. First off, tomorrow's 4th of July. That means there's no harvest happening here. Normally we harvest on Wednesday and Thursday for the big show on Friday. So we're not harvesting tomorrow. So I jumped in to help the harvest crew this morning. Um, and I did all the coxcomb and high, the celosia plumes and a second flush of straw flowers, which is a cool flower. Um, anyway, I am a little tattered. Um, but that's, I'm trying to make this go down a little bit lower, y'all. There we go. Um, so all is good, and I cut a lot of lisianthus. Um, and I will tell you why we're getting questions. I see y'all have started, and I have on a different pair of glasses. I hope I can read with them. Um, I'm super excited because with all this volume of flowers, y'all know I have a membership, right, a club. It's called... Um, the club is what we call it. And you can actually comment club here and we'll DM you the link. But um, in the club, we drop a master class amongst other things every single month. Well, the July master class is about kind of like, what do you do when sales are slow? And so I have, I'm going to be using all these flowers for something a little bit different um, than what we're normally using them for as flower farmers because we find that a lot of people hit bottom in July and August if they haven't built their business to really have customers during that time. Everything just slows down. Everybody's on vacation, um, and it's just a natural trend, but most flower farmers don't plan. They actually have the most flowers of all year during that window. So we will um, just actually um, be taught. That's what the master class is all about. Some alternatives and ways to fix that potentially and what to do with all the flowers. Um, so I see we have a bunch of questions. So I am just gonna jump right in. Hi, flower mom. <laughs> Love everything you do. I've gotta move this y'all. I really can't read with these glasses on. Love everything you do. I purchased my your tuberose clumps from your live shopping show and it's finally blooming. How long can I expect it to harvest tuberoses in my zone 8B Texas? Um, so that's a really great question and I'm glad to hear that you got some. We, ne we didn't even plant, I kept just a little bit of a few clumps and we never even got them planted because you don't have to dig them up. They, are, they will perennialize down there in Texas where you are. Um, ours started blooming mid-July or July right up till frost. Whether or not yours will do that because it's their first year, but you can expect that for next year. And the more you cut them, the more they come. You got to cut them. But I mean, you just can't believe how many stems those things really pump out. So expect that. Hi, Lisa. For fall planting, should I be following the back of the seed packet? 
Examples start 10 to 12 weeks before planting out, which is six to eight weeks before first frost. So flowering post, um, that all depends on whose seed packet it is. If it's our seed packet, um, you know, I don't know what to say about that. If you are soil blocking, first off, the days for fall planting, should I follow the back of the seed phase and start 10 to, so the start 10 to 12 weeks before you want to plant it is an indication usually of how fast or slow that seed may grow, right? Um, and so that really doesn't, and then you just have to incorporate that into your fall planting day. So nothing changes, you just have to count. I mean, y'all, I have um, the cool flower thing is so complicated for folks, but oftentimes it is literally sitting down with a calendar and counting. So no, you don't change. I mean, we don't follow, because we soil block, we shave a third of the recommended seed starting time off of a seed packet. But if you're not seed start, if you're not soil blocking, you don't need to do that. So I'm pretty sure that confused you even more, but I hope that helps a little bit. Should I order my Lysianthus plugs for fall or very early spring planting? Last frost date is March 15th. So that's a really great question. So a couple of years ago, actually three years ago, Bobo and I did a test. We fall planted and then we, because Lysianthus is a cool flower for y'all that didn't know that, and it is winter hardy, typically to zone six or seven easily. I was told that it's hardy colder than that, but um, you know, I, I don't want anybody to kill their plants. Um, so we planted three varieties in the fall, and then I purchased the same three varieties and planted them in very early spring, and they were in next to each other in bed. One bed was here, and the next bed was right next to it. And we really did not see virtually any, you know, usually there's such a benefit to fall planting, you know, more stems, taller flowers, all that stuff. We really did not see a big difference between fall and very early spring planting, except Lysianthus is very sensitive to wet feet. Um, they are very susceptible to diseases that ramp up in cool, wet soil. And by fall planting, you are really dangling that carrot right in front of those diseases. So with that in mind, we only now plant Lizzie in very early spring, plus, you have to order, you know, now let's just say this, if you or want to order plugs of other stuff and you need them in the fall, then I would do it. Um, but in general, we do it in very early spring and they perform beautifully. All right. Hi, Elisa. Thanks so much for all you do for cool flowers, seed starting for planting out fall. Different than this in the same spring, i.e. versus inside, outside. Um, so if I understand you're asking the method of seed starting, is it different for fall? Um, the only thing that's different is that um, the cool flowers that prefer to be direct sown, for us that would be Bells of Ireland, Bachelor Buttons, Bupleurum, um, and just a couple others. Um, we direct sow them in the fall. Um, but you can't really do that in very early spring at that window of very early spring to get the cool flower concept because very early spring is six to eight weeks before your last spring frost. And during that time, it is just way too cold outside for a seed to sprout outdoors. So there are ulterior, we, I talk about that in the book, the cut flower handbook about what people can do in very early spring. Um, but in the fall, so no, we just, we follow the preferred method of that seed, and they're all vary, right? So we just go with the seeds, um, varied, um, what its preferred method is. Hi, Lisa. I got about 250 mini soil blocks hardened off to plant, zone 8A near Raleigh. It's going to be high 90s and 100. If I use hoops and row cover like you, how many days should I do this? Thanks so much. So first off, Kim, I hope you, um, I don't know if you saw my pictures that are videos maybe that I posted last week. Um, when you use hoops and row cover in this kind of heat, 
you're using clips to keep the road cover up. You're basically putting a shade hat on. You're not closing the tunnel in because you will definitely cook your babies alive. Um, we actually planted an entire 100 foot bed like it was the Wednesday before the, um, the open farm. And I thought, oh my God, it's 97 degrees. Oh my goodness, are we gonna kill them? But I thought, well, we, what do we gotta lose? You know, people wanna see what happens. And I used hoops with a cover on top of it with them about 10 inches off the edges with clips on every single hoop. And you have to monitor that, especially during the heat of the day to make sure that something hadn't slipped or fallen off because you'll toast your seedlings um, immediately. And so we left that on probably only for like four or five days um, because they were well hardened off before they were planted, right? And then we planted them and we're just trying to let them get kind of, um, you know, kind of a little bit of established. And there's no reason to not leave it longer unless it's a problem. Um, and so that would be beneficial. The longer you'd leave it, the more beneficial that would be to your planting. And um, we were just talking about that we were gonna have to look at, when I checked on the Sunday after the open farm, the one minute I came out of my house cause I was dead meat after I talked from 8 a.m. in the morning until 3 p.m. Um, in hot weather on Saturday and it was so great, but I was so dead, I'm still dead. Um, anyway, we it does not look like we lost one transplant. And of course, Kim, that is on white film, you know, the white side up on the Bio360 and just don't close that tunnel because that'll toast them in no time. Just started some sunflower zinnias and cosmos 10 days ago. Do you think I'll have some flowers for bouquets in the fall zone 8A? It's not really about your zone um, for that kind of question. It's when your first frost date is. Um, but yes, because we still have coxcomb um, growing up and we're still starting some, it depends on, did you say sunflowers you did? It depends on what sunflower you're starting. You know, there's sunflowers like the ones that we start every week, um, which today, if you're in the club, um, today when I do a sewing circle, it's called, isn't that the cutest name, name ever, y'all? Sewing, S-O-W-I-N-G, sewing circle at two o'clock inside my club. And I do my sunflowers every week and then I usually sew something else, but this week, I'm gonna do a little bit more talking about sunflower sewing because I've had so many questions in the club and people just not, just need some answer to some questions, right? Um, so if your sunflowers are pro cuts, like we start, they go from seed to bloom in like 55 to 60 days. So we continue to start sunflowers every week right up till mid-September. But it just depends, you have to look and see how many days to bloom. That's what it's all about. How many days from seed to bloom does the seed packet say? And that should tell you. And of course, in the fall, you add a little bit more time because the days are getting shorter and hopefully, hopefully, the temperatures are getting cooler. High zone 8B, it is so hot midday and my dahlias are just not happy and struggling. What do you recommend? Thank you so much. So first off, I haven't grown dahlias in over a decade, but I will tell you, I heard Dave Dowling, who was here for the open farm, you know, he talks about that in his course. That's one of his crops. But what I heard him say to people over and over again is you gotta water them all the time. That's one of the reasons I don't grow dahlias anymore is they just need, in this high heat like that, he used to, because of course you use drip tape, right? You're not doing overhead stuff. He would said that he watered pretty much almost every night or every other night um, during the night so they'll be well hydrated for the next day. Um, but yeah, water, water, water. That is um, the big need for dahlias. They just need a lot of hydration. Hi Lisa, can you save your own seeds to start from Champion Campanula? I would say no. I mean, that's definitely a hybrid. Um, and you know, saving seed, people, and I was this very same way. We just don't understand what truly saving seed really means. Anybody can save seed from anything. Does it germinate the next year is a gamble. There's a lot of special handling and storage deals you have to like align with to make that happen. And when you're doing hybrids, which Champion is, um, you have to grow it in isolation. Um, and sometimes they are 
um, growing two different things together to get that. So it's a lot deeper than what we think. And friends, I will tell you, as a flower farmer, I mean, if you're a commercial flower farmer, and I'm suspecting you are because you're growing, you know, champion, um, seeds are the least of your expenses. And in fact, I used to buy plugs of champion every year because they're a little tight, dicey to actually start from seed. Um, so no, I would not even think about that. There are some like the giant poppy pods, we grow that seed. If there's a variety of something that you just, that's not available, it's worth all the extra work, but it is a lot of work. And then you're putting all your eggs into one basket um, by not having fresh seed that comes from a seed house or a seed supplier. Um, so saving seed sounds pretty dreamy, but it's not as simple as it sounds. Just like everybody that thinks growing and selling flowers is super easy, right? I told somebody that yesterday. They were asking me a question about something. I said, yeah, it's as simple as becoming a flower farmer and all that business, <laughs> right? It seemed, everything seems that when you look at anything in life that you are not involved, that's not your daily walk, it seems pretty simple. That's because you know nothing about it right? It's so funny. All right. Jenna, I'm doing my first festival in October. I've been off. I'll be offering mixed bouquets. What should I start now to harvest in October? Sunflower zinnias. I'm not sure what else. Well, really depends on when you're, see the problem is, so we're now in mid-July. There's a lot of crops, you know, when we hit that for me, it's July 15th. All of a sudden on July 15th, now the days start getting shorter. You know, we're going, we're in the long days now and we're getting ready to go into short days and that slows everything down. So really you should have thought about that probably a month ago and had those things ready to go in the ground now, except for sunflowers. Um, pro cut sunflowers are 55 to 60 days from seed to bloom. You could technically, and I'll say this about festivals, I've done, been there been there, and done many festivals because when we started selling products many, many years ago, I really started doing that kind of stuff. And my takeaway is that people are not buying fresh product much at those kinds of events because they're walking around all day. Think about that, right? Um, and so I would only offer flowers that are super easy to hydrate and sunflowers would definitely fall under that. And I would definitely prepare to wrap them up, you know, with a wet paper towel on the bottom of the stems with a little bit of water in a um, sandwich bag that you slip on and rubber band. You want to make it easy for your customers to carry your flowers around all day. You can even, you can even offer to hold them, but you only hold sold bouquets. Do not hold anything. People just won't come back. Doesn't matter if they come back or not, if it's paid for, right? Um, but that's been my take on festivals and so many festivals have wine tasting and then people just get tanked. And the last thing they're thinking about in my experience has been buying flowers. But if you offer flowers that are showy, sunflowers fit that bill and you have plenty of time. Um, so if you're, if you're going in October, I would count, so typically pro cuts are 60 days, but that's in summer. It's going to, I'd count on 70 to 75 days, and I would start at 70 to 75 days, then I'd start at 80 to 85 days away, you know what I mean, back up once a week. I'd start three or four weeks before that date to be sure that you have flowers that are blooming for that. It is really hard. If you're not selling flowers in other avenues, it is almost impossible to target dates particularly if you're not a seasoned flower farmer. Um, so that would be my take away for that. For the summer season, is there a filler you recommend to always have? Um, so filler is relative. Um, I never really understood that back when I first started. I just, I thought filler was just something green. Well, filler is something to puff up bouquets, right? To make the flowers that you're growing go further. And sometimes it can be flowers that is actually filler. Um, the things that come to mind, the, our very faint best um, filler that we have on this farm, and you don't start it from seed, is hydrangeas. I have lots of hydrangeas. I have two hydrangea groves and 
Those are just a lot of mop heads and they're growing in perfect conditions, which means they're protected from the sun. And this time of the year, they're priceless. They're going from fresh, fleshy, blue to starting to turn green. What that means is that they hold up really, really well. People love hydrangeas, and to be able to put one hydrangea head in a mixed bouquet, we did that for supermarket bouquets forever. Um, and so back when I first started flower farming, I thought that the hydrangeas value was selling them fresh to florists, which I did a lot of that. And you can get, I did it both ways actually, and would do it, continue to do it both ways, but I would not sell all my hydrangeas. They are priceless filler. Other things that are filler on my farm, Lemon, basil, Miss Burns lemon, basil. People struggle with that is they tend to not harvest it the proper way nor strip it the right way um, and condition it. We had really good luck. That is undoubtedly Hand Down's customer's favorite. They love the smell of lemons. And then we love Triloba rubecchia, which is that small spray, Black Eyed Susan, which is the best bouquet builder this time of the year, right? And my other favorite, which is another um, non-seed started. It's um, goldenrod. We, I call it a brute. It's the native that just showed up here on my farm and it's pretty aggressive, but we use it long before it, blo before it blooms color. As soon as that head is up there and it's green and poofy, we use it all. And let me tell you, we used a lot of Solidago green. People just don't even know what it is. It holds up beautifully and it fills a bouquet up, so. Those are my, that come to mind, my overheated brain. Tips for field growing, tall champion campanula. I fall planted mine and they bloomed at 12 inches this spring. So it really, um, campanula has a day length sensitive issue. And frankly, I am so hot, I can't even really remember. But look in the cut flower handbook, we talk about that. It needs, it has to be planted in time. It's not like a biennial. I just can't remember what the details are, frankly, but you need to look in there. It's in there, or you can Google it. There's a culture sheet that seed producers or variety producers put out that have those kind of details, and that's all you, I don't know who the seed producer, if it's cicada or who it is, um, but that's what you, that's the information you need. You need, I mean, we fall plant, um, and we get sometimes like 36 inch um, tall, Campanula. It is pretty dadgum impressive. So you need to look that up so you know when to get your, whether you're starting, if you're starting from seed, you need to start probably at a different time. That's why I ordered plugs. Plugs show up on time for all those timelines that you need. Let's see. Is there any seed that can be planted directly out in the ground during summer? I'm sure that there is, but I don't direct seed anything um, in spring and summer. The only time I direct sow, um, and most flower farm, commercial growers um, typically only do that in the fall, and that's because conditions in the fall are conducive to easy germination. It's cooler, it doesn't dry out as quick, pest pressure isn't as strong, um, but in spring and summer, the weed pressure alone you have to over sow, which means you waste a lot of seed. They have to be watered almost every day. You can do it, it's just a lot more work. We just get better quality stands of plants for a lot less labor um, by starting transplants, by starting whether it's plug trays for seed, um, sunflowers or soil blocks for everything else that we grow mostly. Um, so yeah, you, there's a lot of things. I mean, you can read on the seed packet, our seed packet, for instance, zinnias and sunflowers, because people are often like, oh my gosh, you start those inside. Heck yes, they are so much more you. It's like, I want to know I have a plant. I'm a small space farmer, but everybody should treat this like they're small space farmers, right? I want to know that I have a plant every six inches um, on, in every row that I plant in a bed. When you direct sow, it does not work out that way. But when we plant a transplant, there is a 99.9% .9 chance that we're gonna have a flower from that plant or more, multiple flowers if it's a brancher. Um, so whenever on a seed packet in our company, the Gardener's Workshop, um, on our seed packets, it may say, for zinnias, for instance, it'll say, um, start indoors, whatever, whatever, or direct sow outside. It always lists my personal preferred method first. 
So if you ever see that, that's why they're, they, you can do both, but I list first what I actually find to be the most successful, y'all. The bottom line of um, flower farming is like any business, but because so many people come in the back door to flower farming, meaning they're avid gardeners that just kind of get involved and fall in love and, um, and then just start doing it, you have to remember that 75% of a flower farming business is the business part. And part of that business part is it is 100% up to you whether you make money or not. It's the way that you run. It's no different than your home, right? Your household budget. It is totally up to you what you spend your money on and how you use your time. And we see and watch and hear from people every single day that are wasting so much time and so much money on things that don't even matter in a flower farming business. Um, and that was really, and I'm gonna leave it at this and I'm gonna go on the next question. That's why Flower Farming School Online was born, y'all. Um, we started teaching people, those of us, Dave Dowling and myself, Stephen Gretel Adams, um, people that have been doing it for over a decade or more, most of us a couple of decades now, um, that had done it and been successful and just sharing the way we did it. It's like, why make everybody figure it out the long road, right? Anyway, um, but that's the, the short, the long answer. That What's your favorite cool weather cut flower? So funny. I don't have a favorite. Um, if you asked anybody right now, what are my favorites? Every flower that's cutting in a bucket behind me. I love them all. That's why I'm a commercial cut flower farmer. I mean, I love flowers, um, and there is no one that I love more than the other, you know? And that's the joy of this business. It's always changing because I'm an annual farmer, meaning that I don't grow but make one or two perennials, no woodies, well, other than my hydrangeas. Um, so I love them all. All right. All right, so let me answer this. This is, this is kind sweet. This is my first year and I'm in zone 9A. That means she's deep south. Planning on starting cool flowers this late fall. Will I have time to plant a cover crop? Planning on composting with leaves. My space is 80 by 100, which is huge. Not sure the steps to take to make sure my soil is ready and healthy. Thank you. So that's a really great question. First off, I say to people, don't even think about cover cropping until you're an experienced farmer. Cover cropping is dicey and it takes up time and space from your garden and you can build your soil um, for now with compost and leaf mold. Um, so you need to do a soil test. Um, the only time we add anything to our soil beyond compost and general purpose organic dry fertilizer is based on soil test. Um, and that'll really enlighten you if there's some depleted nutrient or some OD of nutrient. Um, and so I would say to incorporate two to three inches of compost, finished compost, um, or leaf mold into your garden, get it mulched. Um, I mean, buckwheat is a quick cover crop, but I just, I'm telling you that but cover cropping is just a little more difficult than what, I mean, when do you extinguish it? What happens if you don't get a good stand? Then weeds grow in your garden. Um, so I would say I would compost that puppy and cover it in a silage tarp. And a silage tarp is heavy duty black plastic, which will cook all of the weed seeds on the surface of your bed. Um, and so that's a really great one. Um, and so you would be planting cool flowers. Um, six to eight weeks before your coolest period of the season. You know what I mean? Like you're made, I know you probably don't even freeze, um, but that's the point. You want cool flowers to be getting established as they're moving into that cool to cold time on your, um, in your garden. And so good luck. That is, I would say people in the deep south can probably grow everything, grow all the cool flowers, but they have a harder time figuring out exactly when they plant them because they don't get hard frosts or deep cold like the rest of us do. All right, friends, I am going to wrap it up with that. It is coming up on one o'clock. And I also wanna say, if you're in the club, remember to meet me at 2 p.m. today for the sewing circle. And friends, I cannot wait to drop the masterclass mid-July about options and ideas for when sales are slow, 
which is July and August, y'all. Um, for many people, in fact, we sold more in July and August than we did the rest of the year. Um, not the rest, but right along, we didn't have that fall off because I developed my business that way. So friends, if you're interested in the club, you can just comment club here and we'll DM you um, the actual link. Or you can find it on my website, thegardenersworkshop.com. Um, and it's a lot of fun. We drop a master class, a broadcast every month, and then I have a live Q&A where I answer everybody's questions, um, as well as there is a community, and we have the weekly sewing circle where I sew my sunflowers and chit chat, um, and I usually am doing a little something. It's about 30 minutes. All right, friends, until we meet again, and if you're in the club, I'll see you shortly. Ciao.